Rob Saul, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Rob Saul comes to us today from robsaul.com. He has a show on the Gonzo Podcast Network. It's on every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. He's had many awesome guests on his show, including Anthony Cumia, Lisa Lampanelli, Brad Garrett. He's been on the Compound Media Network. He's going to be on tomorrow's morning show with Bill Schultz and Joanne Nosachinski. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for being on the program. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad you uh, reached out. I, uh, I like what you're doing here, and uh, I was uh, I was glad to be a, a part of the show today. Uh, Rob, tell me about how you got your start in radio. What are your origins? What's what got you interested in this particular medium? Well, when I was a kid, I uh, grew up um, from the time I was like six years old. Uh, when I was six years old, uh, Howard Stern had a uh, a show on Channel Nine uh that was in this area and uh i used to always sneak and, and watch it and my parents would get upset and then uh when i found out he was on the radio i started listening to the radio and i got really into that and then i did like a radio internship in high school and i just grew up on you know howard stern and I, that's what i i knew that's what i wanted to do so um when my daughter was first born like nine years ago i was still in my well just beginning my miserable fucking marriage it, i uh i decided uh, i was gonna try you know online radio so i just went on this shitty website and was pretty much talking to myself with nobody listening but i just kept doing it and then i kept reaching out and getting uh different guests and ended up getting hired by uh cbs radio I ended up being on wmex in boston for a while and now i'm here with the uh Gonzo Podcast Network. It's getting really good numbers, and they're doing a lot of good things over there. Back in 2009, podcasting was still kind of a novelty. Uh, it seems like everyone has a podcast now. Does that kind of take some of the wind out of your sails? And do you find it harder to book guests now? I, I find it harder to book uh, some guests, like people that are in main mainstream, where I used to be able to get get them on the show. I I can't anymore because now that you know they're being bombarded by podcasts like you said in 2009 not a lot of people were doing it so I seem legit when I was reaching out to people saying I had a show now I'm sure people are getting uh, tons of these requests and then everybody else that was doing it uh, I guess they weren't as smart as me I would just go to these like celebrities websites and find their uh, publicist or whatever and I and, and nobody else was doing that really but me um, I mean, not nobody. I'm not the only one, but I mean, like you said, there weren't a whole lot of uh, of people podcasting and 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 reaching out like they are now. So you know, Brad Garrett would never come back on the show. Uh, you know, it's well, he he, <laughs> Brad Garrett wouldn't give up, come back on the show because uh, we he was in Page Six News and a, a negative publicity story uh, came out after he did did our show. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just harder. I haven't heard from Lisa Lampanelli in a while. I used to be in regular contact with her, uh, um, her publicist, and I haven't talked to her forever. And she she doesn't uh, uh, reach back. So I mean, but I, I'm getting a lot of cool people over at Compound Media. A lot of people on radio. Like I love Anthony Cumia. A lot of comics. I, I mainly stick to a lot of comedians, and uh, I'm interviewing a lot of uh, really great people. But um, and I, I still love doing it, but uh, as you said, I, I'm not going to get some of the uh, the bigger guests that I've I've gotten in the past. Brad Garrett, though, he's uh, buddies with Dave Lando, and oh, Dave Lando was on your show just recently, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad Garrett, what what happened is he did the show, um, and he mentioned I was with this network called Blog Talk Radio, and that's where anybody could go up and you know, sign up for a subscription and they pay for it and they'd have their own little radio show. But we were one of the uh, uh, featured shows on there because we always had the biggest guests and we got Brad Garrett on there. And Brad Garrett, uh, one of the questions I asked him, I said, I know you do a lot of Disney movies. Uh, do you have anything coming up? And he said, oh, I'm actually doing this uh, a voiceover for something called uh, Tangled. It's a, it's a modern day version of Rapunzel. But oddly enough, she hangs her pubic hairs out the window. A little bit African, a little bit weird. You know, he's making jokes. Um, probably about a, six months to a year later, the movie actually got released. And Blog Talk Radio uh, 
uh, re-aired the interview just to send to Page Six News so they could make it a headline. And the, the headline in uh, New York Post was uh, uh, Brad Garrett's raunchy Rapunzel. And uh, I remember I had uh, comp tickets for me and my wife at the time to go see Brad Garrett, and they were pulled. And Brad stopped talking to me after that story you know, hit, uh, I guess he thought maybe I was involved with uh, uh, re-airing this, but uh, it was uh, blog talk radio. They, they were, they were trying to get, which they, they are still a pretty big company, but uh, you know, they were trying to get in more in the mainstream media. So he was a little upset with me. About you that. can share a sheet many times, but slaughter them only once. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of which your marriage, you said it didn't go well. I assume you're divorced. I am. I, uh, I have, you know, it's, I, I try so hard, uh, growing up not to be white trash and, uh, this, uh, it's, it's the, uh, I have the ultimate <laughs> white trash, uh, story with marriage. Uh, so I was doing the show, the one we did with, uh, Brad Garrett it was called night views radio. Uh, I did it with my cousin, Travis, and then it ended up being branched and called the Rob and Trav show. Um, so anyway, my, uh, my ex-wife uh, got pregnant by Trav, and uh, they're still together to this day. And uh, <laughs> did Maury get involved? Maury Povich? Yeah, that's what I said. He, it was a whole court thing, custody battle. I felt like I said. I feel like when I was walking down the, uh, you know, you know, the court aisle, that the, the the people in the courts would be you know, chanting Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. You know, it was just so. Uh, Harvey Levin's interviewing you in the green room. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's uh, it was you know. It, it was a tough thing. I mean, I'm glad to be out of the marriage. I was fucking miserable in the marriage, but, uh, um, and the show's actually doing better without Trav. So I guess you, I killed two birds and one stone or they did, but you know, did you get the dog in the divorce? <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a new puppy. I just got her. I did get the, I had a dog since I was 19, a, a Chihuahua. And I got that because I had him since before I was married, but he just passed away. And I, this is uh, his replacement. <laughs> Do you know you have to squeeze the anal glands of these dogs? Um, no, I did not know that. And I, uh, I'll let the vet, vet, <laughs> veterinarian take care of that. Now you put pressure on them and the infected fluid will come out immediately. Because if you don't, that's why they wipe their ass on the carpet, right? So these little dogs... They need some extra care and attention. You should probably get that done. So is that what you did? You did that with your uh, dog, Russell? You would squeeze its anal glands? No, my dad did that. <laughs> your dad and my dad might get along. My dad turned out to be a homosexual, but uh, <laughs> I never saw him squeezing the dog's anal glands at all. Yeah, well, my dad actually died last year. So. Oh, God. Yeah, my dad died. Um, but he died of AIDS from being a homosexual. So <laughs> My dad died of leukemia when he was 47. Yeah. Uh, how did you get Anthony Cumia to be on your show? Um, just, uh, you know, I, I, I subscribed to uh, Compound Media and I reached out uh, through Compound Media and asked if he would be interested in com coming on the show. It's a little bit of a hassle. It's hard to get Anthony tied down in, uh, you know, anything. He's all over the place and it's got a lot going on. But, uh, <clears throat> One of the producers in the show and uh, Ali, she uh, she uh, she made it work and, and got him on. But the funny thing is, you know, I was such a you know hardcore uh, Howard Stern fan and grew up, you know, just wanting uh, to do that when I grew up being uh, you know the Howard Stern show. I, I I loved it. So I hated Opie and Anthony, but I never heard Opie and Anthony. But I told everybody I hated them and the show sucked. But I I never heard the show ever. And uh, the more I got into radio, the more I got, you know, different uh, comics on and different people working with me in radio. They, you know, they were all big, not Opie fans, but, you know, Anthony Cumia fans. And I said, well, let, you know, then he brought Artie over and I said, let me, let me check it out. I love Artie, you know, who was on the Stern show. So probably about a week before the Artie and Anthony show premiered, I subscribed. But I sat and I binge watched all night a bunch of Anthony Cumia shows. And I said, holy fuck, this guy is 
hilarious. And I even told him on the show, I said, I can't believe I deprived myself all these years of, of you know, of this humor. And, uh, you know, you're, you're fantastic. Just because, uh, you know, another radio host uh, programmed me to, you know, that you're not good. And, you know, it, it was just, uh, you know, that, you know, there's weird, goofy uh, radio wars and stuff and the Howard Stern show and Opie and Anthony show didn't like each other. But man, I, I Anthony, Anthony Kumi is great. He, he's fucking brilliant. I love that guy. Him and Jim, the fastest uh, in the business, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, the stuff he comes out with, I, can, I mean, I could sit and watch that show. Uh, I watch it when I get home from work. I watch the, uh, the Artie and Anthony show, and it just, it just fucking cracks me up. And you, you, you said you interviewed Dave Landau. I had him on my show. And even him, him and Anthony uh, going back and forth, I mean, it's just, it's so fucking quick. I mean, it, I, I could only uh, dream of being that fast, you know, uh, <laughs> with a rapport with someone. But you went to this radio schooling. I didn't really go to, to school for radio. Uh, in high school, I did a uh, an internship. It was uh, where you went out of school and you worked. So I worked at a radio station, but they put me with the guy, and his name was Chongo. It was in West Virginia, and it was called Chongo in the Morning. He was like the oldies DJ that did the morning show. And Chongo would just pretty much sit there and do his show. I sat there and watched. And during the commercial breaks, he would just, you know, talk shit. And, I mean, he was such an angry dude. I mean, you know, he, uh, you know, during the commercial breaks, he would, this is a, you don't want to get into this business, kid. And, you know, this fucking sucks. And, you know, he was so angry. And, uh He'd scream during the political ads, you know, going on at me about what was going on with that. And he, so then when he was done and I would leave, he would put on a, a you know, a briefcase and he, I said, where are you going, Chongo? He said, I'm going out to uh, sell time for the show and stuff. He said, the only way you, he said, you're not going to make shit uh, as a disc jockey. He told me, if you want to make money in radio, you got to get into sales. So Chonga would be the main morning guy, the face of the, the morning. And then he would go out and he would actually sell. And he said, that's how he made the money by selling, getting, you know, a, a profit of, you know, or commission of selling time for, you know, the station. But I went for my, uh, my 10 year, my 10 year high school reunion. I went back to West Virginia with my uh, wife at the time and I wanted to get a new shirt so I went to the store called Peebles <laughs> in West Virginia and I went up and bought the shirt and I walk up and uh, Chonga is <laughs> the cashier <laughs> at, at Peebles <laughs> and I said Chonga is, is that you because you know Chonga was his radio name it said like David on his name tag and he was like yeah, yeah. How do I know you? I said, I interned you. I said, what happened with the radio? And, oh, this son of a bitch sold the station. And, you know, he's, he's still angry, Chongo. So it wasn't much of a, uh, uh, an internship. It was just me kind of hanging out at a radio station with this angry oldies guy that, uh, you know, eventually ended up being the uh, cashier at Peebles. And now you're the angry, disenfranchised jock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the angry guy yelling and screaming about uh, my divorce and uh, everything that goes on. I, I, I find myself, uh, you know, uh, get, getting into an Uber and they'll be like, so are you married? As a matter of fact, I'm not. And I go on to like this angry tirade that reminded me of like relatives when I was uh, uh, divorced. Uh, relatives that were divorced. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Hold on one second. Mike Karina is at the door. Bring and him in. <sighs> this Mike Karina guy is going to be big. You hold on to him. Yeah, he's he's actually good. I just went and saw him at. Uh, he did a show at Caesars at the pier and uh, you know the Caesars Casino in Atlantic City and uh, did a did a great job. Mike, uh, tell the audience about yourself. I've seen some of your act and well, you tell them yourself. Well, I'm uh, Mike Ruina. I am a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I thought um, I was going to say a stuttering comedian. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that too. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to tell people what I do because uh, the words don't come out of my mouth right. So if you think that that sounds entertaining, um, it might be if you like to make fun of people. Yes. Um, I also do uh, the Rob Saul show with this guy Rob Saul on Monday nights, although it doesn't feel like Monday nights because it's still fucking daylight. 
Yeah. I'm they, not used to that at all. Well, when Mike started, we were out at 10 o'clock at night here. Then we went down to nine, then eight, and now we're down to seven. Jesus. I was, I was, uh, I was said, we're not going to stop until we were in the morning slot. I, I was <laughs> fucking pulling in. Like, <laughs> like, wait, am I here early? Like, what the fuck time is it? Yeah. Well, now the time changed too. It's crazy. Yeah. Let's be serious. This Rob Saul guy, every time I see him, he's got a glass of wine in his hand. Uh, divorced, he's got a dog on his lap. Is everything okay with him? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I mean, we know not everything's okay with me. But uh... and, and what's uh, even better is just uh, recently, I really feel like he's having like a quarter-life crisis um because just yesterday he was like yeah i'm not gonna drink anymore you know i got this awesome juicer and i got some organic foods I'm i did I, I didn't say i'm not so gonna not drink better. did anyone fucking clean those things i i, I mean, clean it every time i use it i highly I doubt that because nothing in the studio is clean oh please i uh, <laughs> i just vacuumed the floors today but uh, uh not well but <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you know, it's, uh, I am, I, I, I do say it's actually better than coffee. Like I had so much energy. I got up and I got out and I, I walked, I took a brisk walk wow. to the liquor store and I got the <laughs> wine and I came back and here I am. And I'm, I'm, I'm still got a lot of energy. We're proud of you. <laughs> Mike, uh, tell me about the podcast you're on here, the Rob Saul show. Uh, people of course ask you what the hell you do with your spare time. You tell them you're on the Rob Saul show. Uh, what's your interpretation of what you're doing over there? Well, I like to think that it's a great program where we sit here and we make fun of the uh, hey, program. I'm sorry. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, we sit here and we make light of the uh, the uh, terrible shit that's happened in mostly Rob's life. Yeah. Um, but recently, when people that haven't watched the show have started watching, they said that it's kind of disturbing. Uh, kind of finding out what happens with Rob behind closed doors. Well, I mean, I, people love it. They, they love the disturbingness <laughs> of it. We work at a restaurant as well. Uh, Mike, Mike uh, waits tables, I bartend, and a cocktail waitress there who's not even 21 yet, I guess heard about the show, and uh, she was very thrown off by the uh, – it was very off-putting to her, the uh, graphic details that go on and, uh, in, uh, in my life. <laughs> you guys uh, have girlfriends? I do not. I do. Yeah, this guy does. Hmm. Would have guessed the other way around. I mean, how does the stuttering thing work for you? It's hard. It was hard. To... Oh, fuck. I screwed up. <laughs> she finds it endearing, you know. Um, also, she tells me that I should probably shut the fuck up a lot. And I just listen to her. So I, I, I try and talk as little as 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 little as possible. So he and, does a know, radio show. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best uh, thing that ha that's, that's happening in our relationship right now that's able to uh, keep us together is the fact that I don't think she listens in. Nah, I, I doubt it. I don't think she does anymore. Okay, so let's talk about some guy stuff then. What do you do, and this question is directed to both of you individually, what do you do when the girl you're with, and you like her, has a hygiene problem. Her, her vagina smells. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know that's tough. Like it's tough, right? What yeah. do you say? What do you do? Is there something you can broach? Is there some way to bring up the subject? I don't think there is. I, at least I I haven't. But uh, you know, I I don't think there's a a. a uh, a way with cooth you can tell a, a woman that her, her vagina stinks and be able to continue having sex with her. Um, oh man. I actually have uh this this actually happened to me once when I was in high school. Back when I didn't even I hadn't even had sex yet and the first woman that I put my hand down her uh down her pants when I fucking <laughs> when it fucking came back up, it was like it smelled like fucking roadkill. And at, at and at that point, I didn't like I had never seen, touched, smelled a fucking vagina before, and so I was like, "Is this normal?" This was last like, year, by I'm the not, way. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like that was the only time where I thought like 
and like, am I gay? Because this is gross. <laughs> That was the only time you asked yourself that question? <laughs> That's uh, the only time that I'm going to admit to uh, asking myself that question. So seriously, there is no answer to this question? I mean, I have a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you have to, at that point, uh, weigh the benefits of having her happy with you or with you at all. Because I wouldn't be able to put up with that, with that shit. Hy hygiene is like fucking paramount like yeah. if if you're like if you're fucking gross i'm gonna tell you that you're fucking gross and if you leave me for it i'm gonna find someone cleaner yeah so you wouldn't even bring it up you would dump her oh no i would definitely bring, it, bring up. it up because having a bun in the oven is better than having no bun at all but i would just be like listen what does that mean yeah, I did. That's I, I was confused about that segment too. What does that mean? Like, if she's pregnant, that's better than her not being pregnant? Because that's yeah. not true. No, I didn't mean it's it false. like that. <laughs> that's not true, Mike. <laughs> it's the opposite yeah. of true. Yeah, you fucking got all of this wrong, man. Uh, okay, uh, butt in the oven. Weird metaphor. Move it's, on. It's uh, supposed to mean that, like, having any kind of reliable source of. Uh, Pussy is a lot better than having to go out and try and hope to find it at a bar. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm trying to say. Tell me about this journey that you're going through, Mike. Uh, this comedy thing is relatively new for you, is it not? Um, a few years. Um, I started going to open mics about three years ago, um, not really knowing what to do with it, just kind of feeling good about getting up there, going out, and uh, performing. Um, over the last year and a half, I've really been taking it seriously because, uh, in between the open mics and a year and a half ago, I got pretty lazy with it. So, um, it's definitely fun to like, feel like you're moving forward in an in industry that's so hard to move forward in because, um, there's so many people, there's, uh, so many areas and there's, um, kind of like varying levels of importance. Um, cause if you don't know people or haven't impressed anyone lately, then no one's going to give a shit about trying to see you do some fucking comedy, you know? So, um, it's definitely, it definitely feels pretty good, uh, feeling like I have a, uh, at least a couple of consistent gigs and, um, feeling like I'm moving in the right direction. Yes. He got, uh. Uh, denied on this show called Comics Watching Comics. I did. Uh, this guy we had on, his name's Kevin uh, Goatee, and he said on the air to me, he goes, if you want this guy on, I'll put him on, but just if they rip him apart, you'll have to deal with that. So I said to Mike, I said, all right. He said, if I want you on, you're on. Uh, he said, I don't care if they rip me apart. I want to be on. And then this guy just releases the list of con contestants a couple months later. Mike's not on there, and I said, uh, did Mike not make the cut? He said, nope. And that's all he sent back to me. I was like, this fucking scumbag. <laughs> so, Rob, Mike, tell us about the show. Uh, what exactly is the format over there? Is it sort of a variety show, freestyle? Uh, what should the audience expect from the Rob Saul show? Do you have to pay for it? Is it free? It's free. It's free. You go to... Uh, uh, gonzopodcast.com. There's an app on the uh, iPhone that's free and the uh, Android phone, Gonzo Podcast app. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, uh, but it's free, video format. You can get it in audio format, but, you know, video is great. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would say it's a variety show, comedy show, current events. Uh, it's uh, myself, Mike, and our news guy. It's his voice only, Doug Nelson. It's got a great radio voice, and uh, uh, there's different news and animation breaks during the show, and we always have, uh, not always, but we have some, uh, most of the time, we have some great guests and uh, great comedians and great comics on the show. It's funny because we had a guest every week, and uh, the network, uh, one day we did a pre-recorded show. We had got suspended from the network, <laughs> <clears throat> which is a funny story. Mar Mary Carey, the, the porn star, was coming on the network, and I'm so used to, you know, watching and seeing things over at Compound Media. I started promoting. I said, well, Mary Carey's got a show coming on the network, and we're live on the network. I said, oh, I said, in case of any of you are not familiar with Mary Carey's work, I, 
went to Pornhub and just on the screen started playing like full penetration shots of, of Mary <laughs> Carey. Now, mind you, Gonzo Podcast is also streaming like on Periscope, Facebook Live, you know, Twitter and all that. I get a call as soon as <laughs> – <laughs> as soon as we get off the air, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Rob? Like, did did like, you show nudity on, yeah. uh, on camera? Well, yeah, full penetration. So we got suspended for a little bit, but our numbers were so good, they brought us back. And um, But, uh, you know, they, they told us, they said, we like when you guys uh, kind of just riff. Uh, we want at least uh, one or two shows a month where you don't have a guest. Um, so I thought that was pretty uh, 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 cool that people actually enjoy us talking because we always felt like we uh, – almost like a crutch, you know, having a guest on there. But uh, it's it's nice to know that people enjoy just watching us bullshit. Hey, uh, Rob Saul, Mike Carina. You can check out Rob Saul's show on the Gonzo Podcast Network. It's on every Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So we're getting ready to go live in six minutes. Holy shit. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh well see you later guys thank you so much for being on the program and to the audience watch their show it's free watch and they're good guys cheers all right thanks russell